So welcome to the first session associated with the Creative Technology Toolkit, the first core module in the uh, Creative Technology MSc. And today I'm just going to run through a few little things to get our building environment set up for some of the projects that we're going to learn about through this semester. We'll be using a C++ Toolkit, which is a collection of libraries and utilities that allow us to build things much faster for the language C++. We're using Open Frameworks, which is at the URL openframeworks.cc. And here at the Open Frameworks site, you can see examples where <coughs> people are building projections in installations, they're programming to make drawings, they're building controls for audio, they're interfacing with physical uh, computing elements, they're producing network art, producing audio art, producing video art, and a whole range of different uh, creative solutions using high-speed programming in a poetic sense. With open frameworks you can interface to the web, to data sources, to external physical objects such as lights, 3D sensors, you can process information, you can generate information, you can make it communicate over networks, and you can start very very simply. There are some complexities to C++. It's a, an industrial programming language, but it's also very, very fast, and it's very, very commonly used, which makes it very useful for us to be able to interface to all kinds of devices and objects and systems built by many, many different manufacturers that we may want to talk to. And there's a huge community that supports it, that allows us to learn from their experience and build upon the examples and also the libraries and code that the community is generating. Today we're going to download Open Frameworks and install it. In this instance I'm running on a Mac, uh, but this will apply to Linux or Windows quite equally. And the code that you write on one platform will work um, pretty much without exception universally across Windows, Mac, Linux, and onto objects and devices like uh, the Raspberry Pi. I have one here in my studio. So this little $30 computer with video in, uh, video out, the ability for camera in, networking, etc., will run the code that I can write in Open Frameworks exactly the same as on my Macintosh, though obviously for a $30 computer it's going to run some of it a little bit slower. But it does mean that we can make these battery powered and we've suddenly got a great flexibility to make installation work or deploy to all kinds of different environments. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come to Open Frameworks, and after having a look at the showreel, having a walk around, uh, maybe reading some of the documentation, and noting that in the documentation there's a very good tutorial section. So if you have any questions about the installation process that aren't answered here, you can come and see examples of installation. Uh, <clears throat> you can see how to download and set up Open Frameworks for OS X, for Linux, for Windows, It'll work on mobile, and there are ports to run on iOS for iPhones and Android for, uh, for Android phones and tablets. And it'll run on anything running a Linux ARM um, chipset, which is many, many other devices beyond the Raspberry Pi, ARM 6 and ARM 7. So it'll run Raspberry Pi, and it's a very common, very easy installation, but it'll also run on a number of other boards if you're looking at high-powered boards for audio, etc. There's not a standard desktop or laptop computer. So, click on Downloads. My instance, I'm going to download for OS X. Download starts. And when it's downloaded, I'll find that as a zip file in my Downloads folder. <coughs> now, on my machine here, I've set up a developer folder. So in my root folder, I've added a, a folder called developer where I do lots of my development work. And I'm going to put OS, uh, Open Frameworks into that folder. When it's downloaded, I can go to my downloads folder. And here is my download. I can drag that into my developer folder double-click it, 
and it will unpack. In this instance, I've just unpacked it inside the downloads folder, and I can see here is my name folder. And if I double click it, we can go and have a look at what's inside. Inside here are installation instructions as a mark markdown file, which is MD, which explains the step by step of how to build a license, how to install from GitHub, and a README file explaining the structure of open frameworks. In this folder, the main things that we're interested in are the apps, where our applications that we write will be kept. And if I open that up, I can see there's a folder called My Apps. And when I build more projects, they'll exist within the My Apps folder. You can see there's one empty example for us built already. And in that folder, there are all the elements that that file is built on. The main one being this folder, the SRC or the source folder. So this is where our actual code will go. An H file is a header file that describes the things that might be in our project. The main file is used by Open Frameworks to launch Open Frameworks and explain to C++ how to use the libraries. And our actual code that does the things that we want to do, our loops, our instructions, our calls, our instructions for sound and video, etc., are in the CPP folder, or C++ file here. That will contain, when we've finished, simple instructions about how our program will run. If you're running on Windows or Linux, some of the other items in our example folder may look slightly different. Some of these things are purely for dealing with the development environment that I'm running on the Macintosh, the configuration for the text editor that will help me edit my, my source files. So i am now got this downloaded and I'm going to go to the setup guides and I'm using Xcode, which is Apple's built-in um, development environment that you can download for free. It's very good, but it's also quite big and there's lots and lots of extra things that it does that we don't quite need. But there are several others and I will do short examples about how to use them, especially using the new Visual Studio code which is a lightweight text editor that allows us to edit our source files. We don't get as much help with things, but it does make things simpler if you're starting out. So at this point, I recommend you go to the Xcode setup guide, which will show you how to download our Xcode development environment and how to do our first tests. When you've got it running, which we'll come to in the next video, one of the great things is to have a look inside the examples folder and these are built-in, pre-made example pieces showing many of the different things that you might want to do or that Open Frameworks can do with examples for um, loading 3D models, making 3D primitives and manipulating them, manipulating, manipulating graphics, doing simple computer vision so we can interface to things like 3D Connect sensors, we can do computer vision, we can do object and face recognition, we can generate sound, so we can take sound in, and we can play sound out both as samples and things like simple waveforms. We can communicate over networks. We can record and playback video. We can make graphic user interface elements and many, many more things. So go to openframeworks.cc, download for your platform, Build a developer folder where you'll be doing your regular work and follow the download example to get your first version running.